Hello and welcome to Game Design Lab. I'm Kat Cooker. My pronouns are she, her. And today we are going to be uh, designing in chat um, a sidekick. Um, this is, uh, you know, relatively new uh, to 5e um, a type of uh, character that you can, um, that players or the DM um, can use uh, at a table where maybe there's not enough players. Um, and we're designing today uh, in order to do some, um, I've got uh, community play-by-post events, um, and I'm trying to do them once every quarter. I did one for Halloween um, a couple months ago, thought it was a lot of fun. Um, and essentially what I do is, hey Andy, um, what I do is I have a Discord server where um, there's a couple, um, yeah, these sidekicks are, are pretty cool. I just uh, started using them in my uh, start playing games. Uh, so they are, um, um, just one second here. I made an error on my Twitch chat here. Um, Um, all right, uh, so sidekicks are, yeah, they're really cool. Uh, so I used to, I, I first used one um, in play uh, when I was running a start playing game uh, a couple weekends ago um, because I didn't have enough people at my table. So I assigned a sidekick for um, a couple of the players um, and it was really fun because it, uh, it allowed them to have a lot of agency in the game without having to, um, I guess, like reduce the, the risk um, in the game. Um, because they were fighting against um, some pretty, pretty big, big bads. <laughs> um, so uh, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into um, my my journal here so that you can see uh, I, the rules are all set out in um, D and D Beyond. Uh, this was introduced in Tasha's um, uh, Cauldron and. It's also appeared in a couple of the um, uh, books, um, a couple of the adventure books um, released by Wizards of the Coast. Um, I believe Storm, is it Storm King's Wrath and Dragon, the Dragon one. Anyway, um, we've got, um, um, I'm gonna just switch to my journal so we can see here. Okay, so um, it's under Dungeon Master's Tools in um, Tasha's here and Sidekicks. Um, so it's essentially adding an NPC. Um, however, um, you can either run it as the uh, Dungeon Master or you can assign it to um, your PCs. And uh, I like assigning uh, as some of you may know from um, my work, uh, my DMing on um, D20 Dames in the Good Fortune campaign, which ran for a number of years, um, I had um, Brittany Liana Gay uh, play a an NPC. So she wasn't a PC, and therefore it was sort of like an extension of myself. Um, so that was fun, but in this case. Um, it's uh, I like assigning it to other people because um, it's just one less thing to have to juggle as a as a DM, um, and um, I also feel like it adds a little bit of, of fun. And I'm seeing that there's a, there's an ad break coming up, so I'm just going to um, sort of pause over here for a moment as we scroll through here. Um, and Looks like it didn't happen. So what we have here is <clears throat> you can create three different types of um, sidekicks. There is um, an expert, a spellcaster, and a warrior. Um, 
I think Spellcaster and Warrior are pretty um, uh, straightforward. Um, the Expert is more like um, Jack of all trades type of um, character. Um, let's see if they have an explanation of each one here. Um, before I go into master of certain tasks or knowledge, favoring cunning over brawn. Um, so we're looking at like a scout, a musician, a librarian, clever street kid, wily merchant, burglar. Um, so it encompasses a lot of um, different areas, um, but it's not the brawn tank character. I got that too, Andy. Okay. So just waiting for the break here. Okay. Here we go. So um, in order to create a sidekick, let's talk about um, who our, our, our PC is, because this is very specific. <laughs> and I don't, it's, it's completely perplexing to me. <laughs> uh, it must have to do with like uh, how many people are in chat and things like that. There must be some algorithm that uh, we're not aware of. Um, but with the sidekick uh, specifically, uh, what we want to do is make sure that um, our hero, who we created last week, uh, Pear Dot Pero Starfell, um, has someone who um, maybe doesn't have the same skill set um, as them. And so I'm thinking it's either going to be a warrior or an expert, sort of leaning towards expert, but I'm open to um what the community wants to do because it is going to be a community play by post event um which i am um running tomorrow uh december it's thursday december 21st um between 9 and 3 p.m uh 9 a.m to 3 p.m pacific um it will be in my discord um server so anyone who's a patron or um start playing player or Twitch follower, um, you all have uh, uh, the ability to join this game. Just um, <clears throat> if you're not in my Discord, uh, message me um, through here or uh, social media. You can find all my links at steampunkunicornstudio.com. Um, I'll put that in my, I think it's in my welcome message here. <clears throat> All right, so Andy, what, uh, and anyone else, um, what do you think um, we'd like to do for a sidekick? Um, I am leaning away from, from Spellcaster because I think um, Pero is um, is a spellcaster, a sorcerer. So let's, uh, let's maybe look at either the expert or um, the warrior. Um, well, we can uh, we can figure that out as we build the expert. Um, so I'm going to go in here and look at specifically at the expert here. So um, Pero is a level 10 sorcerer of uh, wild magic. I'm thinking that we're going to build a ninth level expert um, sidekick. Um, and as you can see, um, there are a lot, there's this table here um, for the expert, and these are all the class features that you get. Um, so some of the class features are, um, there's helpful, cunning action, expertise, coordinated strike, evasion. Those are the main ones that we're gonna get um, for whoever this character is. Um, And then when we're choosing bonus proficiencies, we can um, 
do dexterity, intelligence, or charisma. Um, so I guess let's just sort of start there. I'm gonna um, gonna open up um, my journal and I should have asked Jane in in uh, Discord, um, Jane the Geek, um, for a sidekick name. <laughs> But Andy, feel free to uh, think of a think of a, a name as well for um, our sidekick here. Um, we're gonna go with expert. Oops. Now, Paro is a. F um, um, uh, it's escaping me now. Um, giant Fay, uh, fur bulk. Um, and so we can look at different options for um, origin for this sidekick if we want to do that um, sort of at the start. Look at the game rules again. Um, so we have, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe it's also um, a creature from a fey creature. Um, or a forest type creature. That, or it could be like the opposite so that um, there's a little bit more um, understanding of the of the world um, outside the forest because I, I feel like Pero is very nature inclined ah yes Andy uh, that we you, ch you chose um, uh, She's an expertise in a special area. Yeah, it. Um, I guess it, that is more like a narrative, um, narrative side of things. Um, because you know, if you if you do um, an expert who is um, has more proficiency in dexterity, they're going to be more probably like burglar or acrobat right versus somebody who's high in intelligence or charisma um are you thinking more of an or urban background yeah okay um and then so what kind of um kind of urban background sidekick do we want here what origin um Looking through all the, there's so many options. Um, I forgot about Von Richten's Guide to Ravenloft um, because there's, um, there are lineages there. which could be interesting. I'm just going to peek in there just to just to see what these lineages are. So there's the Dampier, Hexblood, and Reborn. Um, so the Dampier is uh, poised between the worlds of the living and the dead. Dampier retain their grip on life, yet are endlessly tested by uh, vicious hungers. Hexblood is, uh, we're wishing, f oh, I like this one actually, where wishing fails, ancient magic can offer a heart's desire, at least for a time. Hexbloods are individuals infused with eldritch magic, fey energy, or mysterious witchcraft. Um, there are some other things here is that they're heir of, heir of hags, they have hexblood blood origins, um, uh, 
uh, and they can eventually undertake a ritual to become a hag <clears throat> if they so desire kind of like that one and then reborn i think is like a frankenstein type of thing reborn suffer from some manner of discontinuity discontinuity or an interruption of their lives or physical state that their minds are ill-equipped to deal with um they they reborn exemplify um being individuals who have died who have died yet are somehow still alive i don't know I, what do we think about a hex blood or we could just pick a Hello, social spy. Unlikely companions to each other are like this, yeah. So we're just looking at origins um, for the sidekick here. We've, de we've determined that the sidekick is going to be um, an expert. What that expertise is depends on how we build this um, sidekick for our hero. Um, so we still need a name and we need um, an origin. Um, and I was looking through D&D uh, &D Beyond to look at all of uh, the many options. And um, Hexblood kind of uh, intrigued me because, you know, um, our hero, Pero, is um, is a furbolg and, um, you know, from the forest and has some fake connections. And maybe this is how they cross paths um, this car this sidekick um, has more of an urban origin. However, you know maybe they there was some sort of fey hex or something that happened, um, and um, they are going through their life um, sort of with this lineage. And um, yeah, um, these uh, these magic powers. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to add that to our character here. I do wonder, um, it wasn't, uh, I think we could, we can still pick like, a. Uh, another humanoid oh here we go it is a fey type creature so uh if you replace a race with this lineage you can keep the following elements of that race any skill proficiencies you gain from it and any climbing flying swimming speed you gain from it um so we could still pick um um a, uh like a race um do we think it should be maybe like just your average human, or do you think it should be a, a fey creature? I will just give some other examples of uh, of the races here. I mean, you know, we've got. The, the standards of you know dragonborn dwarf elf gnome uh halfling human tiefling um or we could go with um an eladrin or fairy or herringon which is the rabbit folk Seder. Humanoid might be beneficial. Yeah. Do, so do we want human, elf, um, dwarf?
Maybe some type of elf, hey? You love playing a dwarf? We can make it a dwarf. Let's, let's make a hexblood dwarf. All right. Um, so then um, this is where we start to build the character um, uh, based on what the sidekick can do. So with this expertise, um, socialist, I'll let you know, uh, socialist by, I'll let you know that. Um, so the expert here is a master of certain tasks. Um, and it's a type of character that um, is going to be more cunning than brawny. Um, so the examples they've given here are scout, musician, librarian, clever street kid, wily merchant, or burglar. Um, so we keep that in mind as examples as we're going to build out this character. So for at first level, we get um, uh, the helpful feature, but we also get bonus proficiencies. So do we want our this character to be um, high, uh, have proficiency in dexterity, intelligence, or charisma? Um, I believe our sorcerer um, already probably has charisma and intelligence covered there, so I'm kind of thinking uh, dexterity um, would be a good one, um, particularly because um, a fur bulk is um, larger and um, I think would probably be noticed a little bit more. Yeah. All right. So we'll do we'll do dexterity. Gonna sneeze, or maybe I'm not. Oh. Okay, didn't happen. Um, so we have helpful is another uh, feature that we uh, automatically gain at first level. Uh, the sidekick is adept at giving well-timed assistance. Uh, the sidekick can take the help action as a bonus action. Um, what else do we have here? So we get cunning action. Uh, then we get a uh, proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check that it makes using any of the chosen proficiencies. All right. So what do we think? Is anyone a comical thing for me? I don't know. Like it just um I don't know what happened with that sneeze. Um So skill proficiencies. There's so many. Um what do we want to do here? If we're leaning into dexterity, um we probably want to um get some sneakiness in. Could also look at um, backgrounds for the character just to see, um, just for an example of um, where they might have come from. Do we think that this individual is Um, I don't know, like, are they, could they be Fey lost? That's a good, that one goes really well with what we're talking about here, because if they're a hex blood and they were Fey lost, um, that would be kind of cool. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, um, a Feywild's Fey lost background is um, you grew up in the Feywild dis after disappearing from your home plane as a child. Perhaps you were spirited away by a kindly Fey who thought you were destined for great things. Um, and maybe that's the Hexblood connection there. Um, and then when you finally returned to your home plane, you did not uh, come back unchanged. Um, and you're haunted by the fact that the Feywild um, is only a hair's breadth away. 
what you get out of this is deception and survival as skill proficiencies, uh, another language that's either Elvish, Gnomish, Goblin, or Sylvan, uh, tool proficiency with a musical instrument. There's a Feywild trinkets table. And then you have a Fey mark as well. So uh, we could either roll for that or come up with something on our own. Um, There's just a few other other things here that have personality traits and things like that, which I think would be helpful. All right, so we're going to go with sneakiness. Um, uh, third level. What was it? How many? Two skill proficiencies. So. Stealth and sleight of hand, maybe? All right, I'm going to add here. Hey, lost background just for extra flavor. I know acrobatics. Um, well, what do we think the side the sidekick's job? was is before they met Pero. Um that might help. Like were they were they part of a a circus or were they part of like the Witchlight uh carnival? Um or were they um what other jobs would require sneakiness besides being a, a thief? Because acrobatics could come in handy instead of uh, instead of uh, stealth or sneakiness in that regard. No, it is hard to think of a non-criminal reason to be sneaky. <laughs> uh, I guess unless you're a spy, uh, what else? What else requires sneakiness? A spy doesn't seem right for this character, though. Oh, street music magician! I like that a lot. Yeah, exactly. Not actually doing magic, but it's just, um, maybe it's a street. I feel like, it, I feel like in a high magic world, magician is probably not, not the word that we'd, we would use here. <clears throat> maybe we just use street performer. Um, 
And in that case, I think um, we would increase at where maybe we, we have, um, instead of stealth, it's uh, performance. Sleight of hand, I think, or maybe uh, I'm wondering if acrobatics. Let's do acrobatics instead of stealth. I want to. I want to keep it with um, dexterity. I think. This fits. Yeah, I like it. Uh, and then. We still need a name for this dwarf. Um, I feel like this dwarf needs um, a street performer name. And it might not be their real name. Um, or maybe it's like their real, real first name and then it's like the something. Um, A single name name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind is Hexwardo. Hexwardo. Like Eduardo, but with Hex. Let's look up some uh, fantasy name generator names. Dwarf. Not liking any of these. Maybe I will look up, I don't know, Norse names. Oh, I like the name Astrid. Maybe we can play off of that. Magnus is always a good one. <clears throat> Something with more pizzazz, though. Like Ast Astradella or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, okay, so I, <laughs> um, I played a Hexblade, um, Herringon in a Strixhaven game, 
um, and I named I named her Hex, but it was Hex like H E C K S. Hexica. Um, yeah, her, her name was actually short for Hecate. Um, Hexica's funny. Hex, um, I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, Hexington, Hex. Uh, hex something hex hex sands Yeah, uh, I I don't think I I have that figured out. Um, <laughs> that might help. Um, I was thinking that Paro. Um, uses they them pronouns um, but this uh, the sidekick totally up in the air let's go to name meaning uh, be behind the name my favorite place to look for names. Mm -hmm. Magic. Not a lot of names of magic besides, you know, there's Gandalf, Jadis, Jormungandr, Maya, Ramu, and Taika. Wow, I, I feel like this is just a point where I'm stuck. Uh, Hexabella, wait, I love that one. Okay, I like Hexabella uh, because it, sound, it very distinctly sounds like it is a stage name. Um, Hexabella, there we go. Thank you very much. It is fantastic. All right. Um, definitely not their given name. <laughs> uh, 
Um, all right, so we have a Hexabella who is a street performer, does like magic tricks. Um, they're an ex a ninth level expert, a dwarf with the Hexblood lineage, but they also have the Feyloss background. A lot of ties to the, to the Feywild here. Um, they probably met, um, met um, Pero um, on their first uh, uh, entrance into a, an, an urban area, probably. Um, and I feel like, you know, Hexabella probably took it as a sign, you know, meeting this um, um, person from from the Feywild who was looking for a guide um, and um, yeah, left, left street performing to go on adventures. I like this. All right. Um, so what else do we need to do here? Uh, fourth level, we have um, abilities a score improvement, probably increase um, dexterity. Um, yeah. In this case, I'm not going to take a feat. Um, so fourth level. So let's just go into a couple of the things here with um, their backgrounds. Uh, um, let me say she, her. Um, okay, so with the hex blood, um, we have um, uh, so Hexabella is an heir of hags. One way hags create more of their kind is through the creation of hex bloods. Every hex blood exhibits features suggestive of the hag whose magic it inspires their powers. This includes an unusual crown, often called an elder cross or a witch's turn. This living garland-like part of a hexblood's body extends from their temple and wraps behind the head, serving as a visible mark of the bargain between the hag and the hexblood, a debt owed for a change to come. So um, that's an interesting feature here. So what are we going to... Um, It'll be okay. We have an elder cross, which is turn. What do we think this looks like? Maybe it's like when I think about dwarves, it's often related to, um, you know, the Tolkien esque um, mines and things like that, but like, and stone. So maybe it's like a crown of flowers, but it's made out of carved stones, um, but doesn't feel like it weighs anything.
then so we also have hex split origins here i could roll a d6 or just um choose an option um so the list here is um seeking a child your parent made a bargain with a hag you are the result of that arrangement um fake kidnappers swapped you and your parents child a coven of hags lost one of its members you were created to replace the lost hag you were cursed as a child uh, a deal with the spirits of the forest transformed you into a hex blob now free of now free of the curse You begin life as a fey creature, but an accident changed you and forced you from your home. A slighted druid transformed you and bound you to live only so long as a sacred tree bears fruit. Whoa. I think the cursed as a child one and then dealing with the spirits of the forest is... Yeah, lots of uh, lots of heavy origin story here. I, I'm thinking either you were cursed as a child and a deal with the, the spirits of the force transform you into a hex blog, a hex blood, now free of the curse, or a slighted druid transformed you and bound you to live only so long as a sacred tree bears fruit. Which one, which one do you think we should go with? The, the curse or the, the sacred fruit one? Yeah, <laughs> I know the sacred fruit one is is so cool, um, but maybe maybe we'll go with the curse because um, we might be able to do more with that narratively. Um, just a couple other notes here, so. Um, <clears throat> With this uh, lineage, um, Hexabella uh, has an ability called an eerie token to remove a lock of her hair, uh, one of her nails or, or tooth harmlessly. Um, and then the token, this becomes a token imbued with uh, magic until she finishes a long rest. And with that token, she can either cat. Uh, take these as actions, sending a telepathic message or um, remote viewing um, in which she can enter a trance and then um, see and hear um, from where the token has been placed. Um, she can also cast hex magic, um, uh, disguise self and hex and that also requires a long rest. And then she, uh, so she needs to choose, choose an ability for these spells, um, intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. I'm thinking charisma because, um, um, because of her work.
All right, and then um, we don't have a lot of time here, but we're going to go into um, her background and grab what they lost here. So she gains deception, survival, skill proficiencies. Okay, so the fame mark. In addition to having the hex blood crown um, of hers, um, she also has a fey mark, and these ones um, we can just determine by rolling a d8. That's my d8. Still have my um, thousand year vampire um, diet out here, dice out here, the ones with the skulls in them. Um, okay, I'm just going to roll this and got an eight. Oh, I don't like that one. That one's just weird. All right, a one. Your eyes swirl with iridescent colors. Feywild visitor, whenever you're sound asleep you know, or in a deep trance during a long rest, a spirit of the Feywild may pay you a visit. Um, oh, and then we get to pick what this creature could be. An awakened creature. All right. What do we think this creature is going to be? It can be a beast or an ordinary plant that has had the awakened spell cast on it. I think the rest of them I'm gonna just um, roll after after the fact, and then I'm gonna post this in um, in Discord ahead of our play by post event. Which I'm gonna add here in just a moment. All right, I'm just going to add this. Oh, I love that. Yes, we're going to have an awakened rabbit. That's great. Um, All right, just lean into it. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so we have a um, most of a sidekick built up here. I'm gonna do the uh, do the work of getting the um, uh, the stats and everything um, put into um, put into a stat block, um, and then I'll post it in Discord, um, and then we will be able to um, to play with. Pero and Hexabella um, in in the game tomorrow. So uh, just as a reminder, it's uh, running tomorrow, this Thursday, December twenty first, from nine a.m. to three p.m. I'll basically just be you know in Discord um, for for that part of the day, and um, yeah, let me know if you want to um, be a part of that. Um, and uh, we did this on Halloween. 
and it was very fun. And this is actually going to be a Deborah Ann Wall uh, adventure called Heroes Feast. I'm excited to run it. Um, I haven't run it before. Um, I just figured I would do something a little different other than running my own content um, in case people have already played or seen me play um, either on stream or through um, a podcast. So yeah, uh, I appreciate all the input today. Uh, we have really, we've created some, a couple of really cool, uh, really fun characters. I can't wait to see like how how they develop um, as we do these play by posts. Um, hoping to do this once every quarter, depending on interest. But um, yeah, uh, so I hopefully I'll see you in Discord tomorrow. Um, and um, if not, um, these characters are going to be available going forward. Um, I'll post it on Patreon as well. All right. Well, have a good rest of the day, and um, I'll see you. I'll see you soon. All right. Bye, everyone.